I hope Brady Kachuk's phone chargers always fall out. Whoa, Firestocks, savage. What's going on guys and welcome back to your Seattle Storm Bears for Franchise Mode. We're here in the middle of year number 10. Now this is the big year. This is the 10th year we have been a franchise. Four Stanley Cups, multiple President's Trophies, five trips to the Cup Finals, and obviously four Stanley Cups. We're going for that fifth one here, that big old thumb ring. That's what I'm all about. But I asked you guys on Twitter to create me some 10th anniversary jerseys and a couple of them were pretty sick as you can see. I like that B. I really like that B. So I actually screwed up. I should have created them at the start of the year because you can't create jerseys in the middle of the franchise mode. So what I'm going to do at the start of next year, we are going to do our 10th year anniversary of Agent C becoming a member of our team as well as a late 10th year jersey celebration. So it's going to be next year, all right? It's going to be 2028, 2029. It's technically 1819 that would be year number 10 I don't know we'll see um, but I'm gonna go ahead and create the anniversary jerseys for next year I had quite a few submissions so I'm gonna take a few of those ideas and make them my own but thank you to the people who did send them in I, uh, I have them all on my computer and I am going to uh, create the best 10th year anniversary jersey and logo I possibly can so if you have an idea please tweet me your creation of a 10th anniversary jersey to celebrate the 10th year we've been in the league as well as a 10-year celebration for agency becoming a member of our squad now in the last video I was uh, asking you guys how did we acquire the fourth overall pick that we ended up getting Big Mac for I thought it was the Philadelphia pick and it was but Andrew cleared it up he says actually you didn't trade for Big Mac you traded for agency Philadelphia had the second overall and you had the fourth overall that means the trade that we did ended up being a second overall pick not a fourth because I remember we lost out on the draft lottery, but then we actually won because Detroit took Felix Pox, that stinky, stinky guy there in Detroit. Uh, he ended up taking him, and then we lucked out with uh, with Agent C for sure. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do a bit of a comparable right here. I'm going to compare both of their career stats as of right now. I just want to see. I'm kind of curious. All right, so Felix Pox has yet to hit the 100-point mark, which is a little bit embarrassing. So he has played 715 games he has 775 career points all right so agent C has played obviously the exact same amount of games and he has 897 points that is right agent C creeping in on the 900 mark and then maybe next year he'll hit the thousand point mark that's crazy so 715 games for him and he's got almost 900 points that is insane now he is having having not the greatest season and I think I know why and a lot of you guys were telling me trading Clayton Keller was a mistake why would you trade Clayton Keller and keep Marcus Forsberg for more money that was a mistake all right so I apologize to Clayton Keller I I really screwed up there I should have traded Forsberg and I should have kept Clayton Keller now it's not to say we won't trade for him it's not to say we won't be back one day but uh, yeah I I royally screwed up there but you know what it is what it is we are going for another Stanley Cup I can't dwell on trades that happened you win some you lose some but I was looking around the NHL and I wanted to show you guys some teams that kind of stood out to me now the first one was Buffalo look how sick they are Oh my god, look at that center depth. That is just insane. Oh my god, what a team, honestly. That's probably the best team in the NHL. Their defense absolutely sucks. Uh, who do they have in the cage, actually? I don't even know. Um, probably a drafted guy. Yeah, Frederick Livingston, who was the second round pick in 2020. So they're, they definitely grew him. The next team was the New Jersey Devils. I wanted to show you guys. They were sick as well. Uh, don't have a great goalie, but uh, offensively, I mean, look at this. This. Oh my god. They have two first lines pretty much and then their bottom six is just so strong. And then defensively they're looking pretty good as well with Risto and Butcher. They're looking alright. And then the next team I want to show you was the Vancouver Canucks. They look pretty good as well. Uh, year number 10. I would love if this is how the actual year number 10 Vancouver Canucks looked. Thatcher Demko between the pipes. And then they got uh, Nemestikov, Pedersen, Besser, Lind, Kairu, Dalco. 
Cole, former Seattle Storm Bear, Brandon Saw, Jonathan Deleen, Leipzig, Brizgalov, Gadjevich, and Michael Furland. So they are stacked, very, very stacked. And now I did want to see where um, Austin Pope went, and he actually called up Ovi. He was like, hey, man, I'm in free agency. I got a few different offers. I got Ottawa, I got Montreal, and I got Washington. Where should I go? And Ovi said, you must go to Washington. Very, very good place. So he did. He went to Washington. He is now the third line grinder for the Capitals. So there you go. There's Austin Pope. 15 points in 58 games. His career high is 27. He might break that, but uh, there he is. He's hanging out in, um, in Washington. So there's that. So I don't believe I'm going to make a trade. I think we have a little bit over a month before the trade deadline. Uh, oh no, we only have a couple days actually. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the trade block on. If we get a blockbuster move, we'll see. Um, this is a big move to maybe go into the playoffs, maybe get a little bit stronger. Maybe something could happen, I don't know. Let's go ahead. We do have three first round picks this year, so we could use that for trading as well. Uh, I do have a nickname for Palmier the Germinator, all right? He is the Germinator. 6'3", 209 from Germany. He's a big defenseman. Only one goal this year, which is a little bit weird because he had uh, seven last year. I don't think he's going to get as many points. He is pretty steady for us, plus 19. The Germinator. There you go. So Forsberg, you're on the trade block, all right? Who else? Um, just for fun, let's see if we... Look at all his trade value. Oh, my God. Uh, Houston, he's hanging out there. Hopefully, he pans out for a future number one center. Uh, Oliver Ekman Larson, not saying I'm going to trade him, but this is probably going to be his last year. Uh, who else can I throw on there just for just for fun? Uh, let's throw Yakola on there. He hasn't been playing that great. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the trade block on, and then we'll get the next couple of games done. And then I think we should be off into the playoffs. I mean, I know we're going to be a playoff team, but I hope we finish strong. I am a little bit concerned for next year because we have to re-sign a ton of players, and I mean a ton. So this team, this could be the last year that we keep our core group because, I mean, dynasties fall apart. It's just what happens. I, I really hope we can keep as many people as possible, but I'm looking at it, and there's a lot of people we have to re-sign, and there's not a lot of money out there. So this could be the last we see of of the dynasty you can see a lot of players gone next year and maybe we only do a three or four year rebuild but maybe that's all we need and then we're going to get right back into the stanley cup final it's interesting because we have a lot of players we have to sign i'll show you here so all of rickman larson we obviously have to re-sign for next year um who else we got to re-sign ryan paling who's now a 90 overall we traded for him at 83 i think we traded scraps for this guy like what a trade that's probably our best trade we got to re-sign the germinator we got to re-sign keatley Moro, Krista, Quinn Hughes, we've got to re-sign, OEL, probably going to let him walk, uh, Yakola, Kachuk, all that, but that's not even the big one. The big one is Big Mac. Talk about the big one. He's going to want 11 or 12 million, so... I mean, we've really, really got to go for this fifth cup, and then maybe the rebuild has to be intact. All right, so let's see what trade offers we are going to get. We should be getting an offer a day um, around that, but the simulation is obviously super slow when you turn the trade block on. As you can see, uh, we're getting flooded with phone calls here. Uh, and the first one is Chris Deck. Oh, got a couple medium elites. Okay, interesting. So who is this? Steos. He is a former first round pick, uh, medium elite, 22 years old. So he's a project. I mean, he's probably gonna be ready for next year, honestly. And then McLeod, who's a 71 overall, former first round pick. But we gotta give up Kristek, who I really don't wanna get rid of. Uh, Fournier, who is a undrafted low elite guy and a seventh. So, I mean, Steos is really nice. I would like to get Steos, but not at the expense of Chris Deck, so I'm going to say no to that one. Ooh, okay, we get a first and a second for... Who's this? This is a first for 2029, so that's for next year's uh, first. I want this year's first, because their record is not that good. And we got to give up Osgood, which is a 68 over... So he was a top 15 pick. He's a playmaker. Uh, this guy is another former first overall pick and a seventh. 
So if I could substitute, ideally, um, I just want the first, honestly. Um, let's see what I can do here. I want to stack up on as many firsts as I possibly can. So, All right, so give me your worst player here. Give me Sean Day, who actually is kind of funny because he got exceptional player status into the OHO when he was like 15 years old, and he never really panned out. I mean, he was drafted in 2016. There's still hope for him. I shouldn't say he didn't pan out, but in this franchise mode, he definitely didn't pan out. Hopefully, he turns out in real life but well, let's go through for a first trade rejected even though it's quite fair to value so i might have to throw something else all right another undrafted low top six we'll throw that in there this should push it over the edge trade accepted there you go that's awesome okay so we got an another first we have four first round picks for this year so what i'm trying to do is do a mini rebuild within a, a rebuild you know what i mean without going too crazy and blowing everything up we're quietly acquiring picks and prospects and and it's kind of a mini rebuild without calling it a rebuild. All right, so Yakola and a fourth for Anderson McDonald, who's a pretty serviceable player, although we don't need him because our bottom six is pretty set. A fourth and some prospects and a defenseman with a lot of cap. Thank you, but no thank you, Montreal. I mean, it is fun getting trade offers, but man, the simulation takes forever and a day. They really need to implement the phones back in franchise mode for the trade deadline because this is ridiculous. Ronnie Doyle is another player that we have to re-sign as well. Um, now, he's not doing that great. He is really struggling this year. He's not super happy, so I don't know what we're going to do with him. But uh, Nitamaki, who is a second-round pick, a medium starter, and Brathwaite, who is a definite project. No, these trades are awful. Come on, Detroit. What are you doing? Okay, this is a big trade. This is a massive move. They want to give us Bo Horvat and a first for Keatley, Osgood, and Samsonov. Now, Keatley, I don't know if we're going to be able to re-sign, but he's so good. He's quietly like one of the better defensive defensemen out there. He's actually got a career high in points with 11. Guy's a sniper. Uh, so Horvat is a really, really good second line center. But we have Trevor Kachuk right now. And he's on three years left, so he'll be 35 when the contract's up. 89s are really nice overall. That would really, really help out. And a first. I'm not super interested in taking on a lot of cap. I mean, if we trade it for Keatley, we're pretty much... Uh, I don't know, actually. We're we're saving 200 grand, which is fine, but... Oh, man, the first is nice. Keatley, I can't part ways with, and I can't take on that kind of cap, but we might not be able to re-sign Keatley. And I actually have another player who who is ready to come up, and that's um, that's Hedman. So, I mean, our defense right now is the, is the Germinator, Keatley, Hughes, OEL, Comrie, and Ronnie Doyle. Hedman is NHL ready. He is definitely ready to go. Um, he's 22 years old, Robert Hedman. We got him at the 31st pick in the 2025 draft. He's ready to go, and he's on an entry-level deal until... So we got to re-sign him, actually. Oh, God. Then our center situation, uh, the better Kachuk. You know, he's actually doing really good. The, the, the better Kachuk's got 38 points. I mean, Horvat's a huge upgrade, but oh, what do I do here? I don't know, man. I just can't see a world where I have another top centerman. I mean, he's listed as a second liner, probably. Yeah, he's listed as a second liner. He's perfect. I would love to get Horvat, but I, I just can't do it. I don't have the room. I'm not going to trade Kachuk. He's doing really well on the second line. He's going to get 50 points this year. That's fine. Horvat would be a huge addition, but I, I can't do that. Okay, here's something I can look at. So a 2029 first round pick. I don't want to trade Regan, or do I? Do I want to trade Regan and keep Messier? He's got the higher, they both got the exact same overall. Um, one of them has to go, because I don't have room for them. Uh, we got Hedberg, who is a undrafted 22-year-old, and looking pretty good. Huey is an undrafted 22-year-old as well, and a first. So I love the first round picks. That's, that, that's awesome. We're gonna get a player to replace Regan in the AHL. Uh, this should work. All right, this should work. So this guy is, uh, what is he? He's 20, 23 years old. So yeah, he's just going to be a helper in the AHL because we're going to get rid of our first line AHL center in Messier when we bring him up. And we get a first and we get rid of this guy uh, who's undrafted. Uh, uh, he's a center grinder. I don't need another one of those. So will this go through getting another first round pick? There you go. Regan, I'm sorry we had to move you, but uh, it is what it is. I have too many centers and another first 
first round pick. The quiet rebuild is here. The thing is, we got so many low elites, we can afford to do this. So, uh, acquiring as many first round picks is what I want to do. I mean, Dallas is a pretty good, uh, pretty good team, so it's not going to be the greatest first round pick in 2029. But still, it's still a, a first round pick, and we basically traded it for scraps. Oh man, trades galore right now. So Cam Brodziak, who I definitely do not want to move, 100% no way, for Frederick Svensson, who is a fourth round pick, okay, who apparently has a ton of trade value, he's medium elite, that's a draft steal, Hickman, yeah, this is a terrible trade, get the hell out, and OEL, I didn't even see OEL in there, no way, alright, so unfortunately we had to get rid of Regan, honestly, it's like pretty much the exact same player, uh, Benjamin Messier, there you go, I'm not a big fan of the Messier name, but it is what it is. Our HL team took a bit of a hit, but it's all good. Uh, there we go. There's how that's looking like. I think we're good to go. I don't think I'm going to make any more moves. That Horvat thing would have been nice, but in my current cap situation, I really can't. I really can't take on that kind of cap. It just doesn't really really seem like it's possible. We've got a few more days here, so we'll see what other offers we get. Um, look at Edmonton, 46 and 12. Damn, that's a nice record. Um, yeah, I know what that McLeod guy's like. He's like a second line center and we don't need him. Pretty much the same trade from Detroit. I'm gonna say no. I've been here for like 15 minutes and it just won't finish the simulation. I'm seriously gonna go play a game of Fortnite because it's been like 15 minutes, so hopefully I win. Oh my god, 15, 20 minutes later, we finally sim the one day and I didn't even get a trade offer. Oh my god, that was seriously, like, I played a game of Fortnite and I lost right away, but I, uh, <laughs> yeah, that took like 20 minutes. Okay, my recording right now is at 57 minutes. And yeah, the video is probably not even 25 minutes long right now, so... Okay, anyways, I think that's all we're going to do for trades. I wanted to get as many picks as I can. We have five, sorry, six first round picks in the next two years. It's a rebuild without doing a rebuild. All right, so I think we're in pretty good hands here. Um, I have a few ideas for what I would like to do come draft day and potentially move some players around. But let's go ahead and get the last, um, the last couple games. I think there's like a month and a bit left of uh, the season. So we got about 15, 20 games games left I think so let's go ahead and get those done uh, let's go ahead and sim the game against the Pittsburgh Penguins no more Sidney Crosby no more Evgeny Malkin and we lose 3-2 in the shootout um, what I want to do is go check out the trade see if there's any big names that moved now since we're in year 10 going into year number 11 I don't really recognize that many players because a lot of them are drafted uh, Calgary got former Seattle Storm Bears pick Kyle Subban from the Islanders okay it's like a lot of our trades were in in there Morgan Klimchuk I recognize him uh, Curtis Lazar okay there's a trade Philip Dineau I know that trade and that's about it so a lot of drafted players no one really knows who anyone is anymore I might go ahead and do a look around the NHL one more time but let's go ahead and get the rest of the simulation sorry that took a little while I just wanted to make sure that I was going to get uh, get as many picks as I possibly could and I would like to slow sim the game against the Minnesota Wild so let's go we got a little over a month left let's see if we could hit another 50 win season under our belt that'll be like the sixth or the seventh 50 win year that we actually have we're at 43 right now it's looking promising it's looking pretty good we beat Edmonton which was crazy because they have probably the best record in the entire league there you go 56 make it 57 47 wins all right all right, so the uh, Minnesota Wild look like they're slowing down a little bit, 38, 31, and 5. They were doing really well earlier, but um, looks like they've been slowing down. Let's go for our 48th win here against the Inanin and Clayton Keller. Now, the Inanin is actually 88 overall on the third line. I had a look at him, and we're 3 nothing after the first. Quinn Hughes, Messier, and Yakola, period number 2. All right, still 3 nothing Going into the third, Agent C gets the fourth, and that's our shutout for Big Mac. That's the 48th win of the year. We could potentially get our 50th against the St. Louis Blues. Uh, Colorado, we have their first-round pick as well, and we just lost there. So looks like it could be against Matthew Kachuk and the Calgary Flames. There you go. Here's number 50. No. All right, can it be against the LA King? This is the 50 win. There you go, seven to one. Damn, we just dominated. So I don't think Agency's even gonna get a point per game or 50 goals. 
Oh, man, we might have to make something happen for a better first liner to help out agency. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird because you don't really see him without 50 goals or like 90 points. It's really strange. I'd like to see him get a point per game. We've got uh, quite a few goals in our last few games, so it could be possible if he turns it on here. If Edmonton wins this game, they hit 60 wins on the year. Damn, period number one. All right, they're up by one. Slepashev, this guy always scores on us he oh he's the new coon hackle all right period number two all right we get two forsberg and moro going into the third there you go we spoil the party messier who is this guy maybe like a fifth nephew of mark messier uh he gets the game winner with five minutes left maybe that's their last game of the year maybe they don't hit 60 wins all because of messier all right, can we get 54 wins on the year? Another 7-1 to one win. We outscore them 14-2, to two, the LA Kings. Oh, my God. Okay, so it looks like Edmonton did get their 60th win. And look at Ryan Paling, 81 points. He leads our team in scoring. What? Oh, my God. So Edmonton did get 60 wins, 125 points. My goodness. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a season wrap-up, and then we'll see who we got in the postseason, and then move on into the playoffs. So let's see who we got. The Vancouver Canucks. All right, now we know how stacked these guys are. So we got Vancouver in round number one, a very familiar familiar team. We've played them quite a few times. So let's see who ended up... Um, who ended up leading in scoring agent C. Did he even hit 80? He did hit 80. Okay, so 43 goals, 80 points. It's not really what he's used to getting. His lowest point total ever? Yeah, that's his lowest point total ever. So that's interesting. His 10th year in the NHL, he only gets 80. I mean, only 80 points. That's a ton of points. But hasn't hit 50 goals since 2025, where he has 73 all right, um, Ryan Paling though, 81 points. Excuse me, who is this guy? What the hell? Oh my god, what a trade. Forsberg had 68, okay, not ideal, but uh, it's pretty decent. He had 69 last year, so 68. Uh, Tolvanen for 9.6 million bucks, that is not very good numbers. Uh, he's got 68 points in four of the last five years, which is kind of weird. All right, Tolvanen. Uh, OEL still killing it, 57 points at 36 years old. Trevor Kachuk, 54 points, out of boy. Brodziak with 48, Chris Depp with 46, Quinn Hughes with 43, Comrie with 43. So I think the scoring was really spread out this year. Instead of Agency having 70 goals and 120 points, looks like everything was just spread out a lot more. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 players had 40 points or more. That's crazy. Ty Ronning killing it there on the fourth line. a boy. Messier had 12 points in 21 games. He's up to 82. Ronnie Doyle actually scored a goal. That's good news. Now, I'm pretty sure Felix Pox outscored us this year, which obviously sucks, but uh, Big Mac, there he is. Five shutouts, 46 and 18. AK 47, 8 and 3. At a boy. Houston with 28 points. Hasn't grown yet, but I still have high hopes for him. Still have high hopes for Houston. Uh, let's have a look and see who led the NHL in scoring. NHL goaltenders. Uh, Ackerman, all right. And then Corpusalo. Look at Backer. Oh my god, we traded this guy to, um, we ended up trading him to Colorado and some other things for a first. And he has 40 wins in his rookie year. Unreal. All right, there you go, Colorado. You're welcome for that. Uh, Big Mac finished fourth in wins. Look at Ackerman, though. What a monster. Jacob Solani is going to win the Norris once again because he is Jacob Solani. Unbelievable. And then all skaters, I don't think we even finished in the top 20. Nathan McKinnon, 116 points. There's only two 50-goal scorers this year. Charlie Svengerg and Nikita Kucherov. Um, Alex Ovechkin finished fourth in goals at 42 years old. Unbelievable. All right, there's Agent C finished fourth in goals as well. It was a three-way tie for fourth. He had 80 points. That's good news. But Ryan Paling with 81 points. That's incredible. So thanks for watching, guys. We've got the Canucks in round number one. Go ahead and prepare a snack. Next episode, we are going to do the entire postseason in one video. We might be in for a bit of a rebuild at the end of next video, depending on what happens in the postseason. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.